All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Course Creator Community Podcast. I am super excited because I've got a very special guest this week from all the way across the other side of the world. Uh, a little bit about this person. She's a specialist when it comes to taking your existing knowledge and turning it into a digital product that you can sell and scale online. She helps with the creating side, the marketing side, the automation side. Uh, she's run multiple successful businesses herself. Uh, the current business that she's in, she was able to generate over a million dollars in revenue in less than two years. Uh, and she now generates multiple millions of dollars in this business and it hasn't even been three years. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So without further ado, let me introduce the one and only Ms. Chrissy Chin. Chrissy, how are you? I'm great, I'm great. How are you? Yes, I'm awesome. Uh, Chrissy, I like to start all my podcasts off with a quote or mantra that inspires you or fires you up. Have you got one for us? Absolutely. Yes, of course I have one. Done is better than perfect. It may not be the first time that you've heard it, but it's one, it's something I say over and over again. It's literally one of the things that we won't talk about today, probably, but one of the things that definitely helped me reach that seven figure mark, multi seven figure mark is done is better than perfect. Yes. Love it. I'm a huge fan of that one myself. And when I first heard it, I, I even used to think I didn't really believe it. I half believed it. It was almost just like an excuse just to get this, the thing done, you know, but sure. now that I know a little bit more, I'm like, no, it, it is better because perfect doesn't exist. You know, I mean, me, I'm 21 years old and I'm not perfect at, at anything. So I'm like, man, if I can't spend 21 years being perfect at anything, what chance have I got of putting a perfect course together? It's never going to be perfect and it's never going to be done which means I'm never going to help anyone. I'm never going to make any, any money off it. So done is actually better than perfect. So I, I love that one there. Um, Chrissy, I've obviously been following you for a, a little while now, but if someone's watching this, listening to this, they haven't uh, followed you, let us know in a nutshell, what is it that you actually do right now? Yeah, well, I have two businesses, but right now, you know, my main business that I'm growing and scaling is, you know, being a coach, showing up for someone who wants to do what I did, take their knowledge, turn it into some kind of digital product, a course or a membership site, and get that online and grow it and scale it. So that's the Chrissy Chin brand. So, you know, where you're finding me on Instagram, the Chrissy Chin, that's what I'm talking about on the podcast. I'm teaching you, you know, how to build your audience, what kind of, you know, digital product to create, how to build it. So it actually gets your clients, the transformations that they want, how to scale that. So that's the main, you know, Chrissy Chin brand, what I'm teaching and, and growing right now. Awesome. Awesome. And whereabouts are you based there, Chrissy? I'm in Atlanta in the Atlanta. States. That's right. But you're not, uh, you're not originally from Atlanta, right? No, no, no. Born and raised in Michigan. So I'm a Midwestern girl, but uh, came south for the weather. So I'm loving it down here. Good choice. Um, awesome. All right. Well, hey, Chrissy, I'm going to hand it over to you. Here. I would just love to hear your story. Let us know how you did it. Self-made multimillionaire. Um, start wherever you want to start. Let us know the next 20, 25 minutes. How did you do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I will try and keep it a short story because like most people's, the journey is long and ever changing and winding. But um, yeah, so I started as a nurse uh, in school. That's what I went to school for and quickly realized that that was not going to bring me the lifestyle that I ultimately wanted. I think when we go to school at 18 years old, no one's sitting down a coach with us to say, what's the lifestyle you want? Okay, let's figure out that career path that really fits what you're passionate about, what you like doing and enjoy, and is going to give you that lifestyle. So I was working nights, weekends, holidays, and I was like having so much FOMO that I was like, okay, I cannot take this anymore. So, uh, kind of didn't know that I had an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit. I wasn't one of those kids that started the lemonade stand when they were seven, you know, you hear that story of I've always been an entrepreneur. I think it's within me. I get it from my dad. Um, but it wasn't something that I thought about until I was like, desperately wanted a change in lifestyle. And so I just kind of said yes to the things that were being presented in front of me while scary as they may have been. 
I was just open to the next opportunity and, and just kind of let my path as I was going unfold. So if you're listening and you feel like, you know, your journey is kind of just unfolding and this might not be exactly, you know, the end place for you, that's okay. Keep going through the motions, keep doing it because you will get there. So I was a nurse. I was super passionate about preventative health instead of just seeing people come in and put that bandaid on and then come back in. And so got started in health and wellness products. After I said, I would never do network marketing. <laughs> my sister started, I was like, I'm good, sis. I'll support you in your business, but no, not for me. And then fell in love with the products and was like, oh, like this is what that business is. Like, I just have to share these products with people that I already love. And, and saw the income disclosure and was like, I could make what, you know, doing what, whereas like my nursing career, it was like, I'm going to have to go back to school. And, you know, I, I like fancy things. I like to do fun stuff and, you know, whether we like it or not, that costs money. And so I wanted to make more money as well as have that, that lifestyle I wanted. So long story short, got into network marketing and kind of hit the ground running, was able to leave my nursing job to have that support me. And uh, then after how, uh, can we get after how long was that? Um, gosh, when did I launch 2014? And then when we moved to Atlanta, it was like a year and a half, two years, not even later. Okay. So I did it for a couple of years yep, yep. Um, and was able to, to just transition to, you know, doing my own work on my own terms. And I've always been a problem solver. And so just trying to solve my own problems, work more efficiently, that, that also comes second nature to me. I developed trainings for my team. Can, to, we, can we actually stop here and just, just go back a sec here? Because yeah. I think even that's a pretty cool story. To be able to quit your full-time job in two years' time, you must have done some pretty cool stuff there as well. That even if someone's watching this and they're not a network marketer, like some of the principles I'm, I'm sure will be the same. You reckon you could let us know a couple of the, why were you, because you see network marketers all the time. A lot of them are broke, yeah. you know. How were you able to do it in, in two years' time? What are a couple of skills or, or different things that, that you had that, were, that enabled you to do it that a course creator could also benefit from sure, as well? Sure, sure. I did the hard work. Yeah. I showed up. Yeah. Right. A lot of people, you know, network marketing gets a bad rap because anyone can start for, you know, hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so many people want to do it and realize, oh, this actually takes hard work. Yeah. Like I actually have to go find customers, but you know, yeah. I only have so many sisters or brothers <laughs> or whatever. Right. Like if I actually want to legit have this as a business, I have to you know, a find more customers outside my inner circle. Cause you can only pester them so much. And we don't really even want to <laughs> pester them yeah. and be like, you actually have to become a business coach and train other people how to do this business. Mm. And so if you're not willing to put in the hard work and to show up on the days when no one shows up, you know, you're hosting events. I don't care if it's a course you're launching or products that yeah, you're selling through another company, like love affiliate marketing. Yeah. right? Like you have to show up, you have to get in front of the people, you have to identify their problem and their wants and their needs. And we'll, we can talk about that later, but you have to show up, you have to do the hard work. And even when no one's showing up to your webinar or to your live event or whatever it is, you have to slap that smile on your face and be like, you know what? This feels really crappy right now. And why am I even doing this? But remembering why you really are doing it for the freedom whether it's financial freedom or time freedom or, you know, whatever it is that you're desiring, you have to put in the hard work to move past those hard days. And, and you will eventually see if you keep doing the hard work and not doing bad hard work, but keep learning from, from people like you and me who've been there before and trying something that's not working. I'm going to try something different, you know, keep learning and keep trying. You can get there. 100%. Love it. I'll, I'll expand on that a bit. One of my favorite quotes is successful people are successful because they do the things unsuccessful people don't want to do. And when mm -hmm. I heard that, I'm like, man, what are these things? Tell me these things that unsuccessful people don't want to do so I can go and do them. And I, I went to the next chapter in the book or whatever it was. I was like, right, the things that unsuccessful people don't like doing, 
for the things that no one freaking likes doing, you know, waking up early, you know, going out and and networking when you really don't want to network, you know, and staying up late and reading books on sales or, you know, whatever it may be, that's the answer. And I think in today's world, it's a very instant gratification world, right? So I think a lot Mm -hmm. of the times we can sort, and you see a lot of marketing as well, you know, hey, here's how I made a million dollars a month or or whatever it is, you know, and everyone assumes, oh, it's easy. And and a lot of people will take the easy route. It's like, hey, here's a proven route to make a million dollars in a year. Oh, that looks like hard work. Anything easier, you know, and it, it doesn't usually exist like that. So I think that's important there. And I think also like um, another way to look at it is just, just logically, right? It's like, say there's a hundred people and there's one thing that, well, there's one thing that no one wants to do. And it's probably involves investing your money and your time in doing something, you know, no one wants to, to invest their money and their time in something that might be a gamble, right? Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But that one person that does it, okay, cool, that they're going to succeed. Even if it's not from that one thing there, if they do enough of it, it's going to succeed there. So I think that's, um, yeah, awesome point there. Yeah. So, sorry, you just wanted to-, to- No, I, I agree. And with, with network marketing, it's mostly investing your time yeah. in, into that. Whereas, you know, when I launched Grow Workspace, which was my first course in membership site, that was not only time, but also money yeah. in, you know, a website. Yeah. And, you know, so I got creative cool. on how to not shell out a bunch of money because to be honest, I was like, I have no idea if yeah. this is, this is going to go, you know, bonkers and people are going to love it. Or if it's going to be crickets, you know, I had a vision and a dream that it would, and thankfully it did, yeah. but you know, it was a risk that I was taking spending time and energy, but that's what, all the time when we're building our business, no matter what you're selling product services, you know, affiliates, it's, you, it takes time and effort and energy. And there's a risk that some days are going to be better than others. Um, but, but I really do believe, and, and I always talk about building a blissful business, like one that you yeah. love yeah. because there will be hard days. There will be yeah. days where you're like, this is hard work. This is exhausting. But if you love the work that you do, it won't be so painful, right? Like if you really love serving a specific audience, then you will want to show up every single day, even if there's only one person there, right? It almost makes you feel good, you know? Like Mm -hmm. I'll even just use this podcast as an example. This doesn't feel like work to me, you know? It's like, even though I I get, you know, okay, I'm spending an hour of my time, but I would do this all day. You know, mm-hmm. if it came down to it, it'd be like, all right, hey, I'm going to wake up early and do it, you know, stay up late and do it, whatever it may be. And I just want to uh, expand on this one more and then we'll get to, to the rest of your story there. Another one of my favorite quotes is Tony Robbins. You know, I don't know exactly his, his word for word what it is, but even if we paraphrase it, it's like most people overestimate what they can do in two months, but underestimate what they can do in two years. You know, and it's mm-hmm. like, and it's good to have ambitious goals and be like, yeah, in two months time, I'm going to have this launch and sell $10,000 of coaches and of courses and make $10,000 a month. And a lot of the time that's, that's ambitious, but you underestimate, hey, in two years time, if I consistently mm-hmm. do all these little things right, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to have a million dollar business. So I, think yes. that's, I don't know if it's two months and two years, but that's probably sure, a sure. And, and the concept. Way, yeah, it's the concept, whether it's, you know, um, one year, well, one month and one year, you know, or five months yeah. and five years, that sort of concept. But sorry, I'm going to hand it back over to you. So, right, you, you quit your your full time job, you know, you're doing good on network marketing. You want to make it a bit more efficient now, so you're putting yeah. together a course to train your team. Yeah, yeah, and so you know, put that together. I was answering the same questions over and over again, mm. and I was like, oh, I'm wasting a lot of time, right? As course creators, I can, you know, I hopefully you can uh, resonate with this a little bit. How can I do a training, record me saying the same thing that I've said just ten times, and then put it in their hands when they ask that question? And ninety nine percent of the time, the questions were answered. Mm. And, but then what I found was they got that surface level training and then they'd come back with actually the five questions I had were answered. Now I have this kind of next level, Mm. deeper layer question, and we would focus time and energy on that and quickly realized, long story short, that other people, other teams would want access to this and would want to pay me. 
Yeah. Um, and so decided to launch this course. I, I mentioned before that I got creative with how I didn't shell out a bunch of money. My youngest sister, who is an amazing, um, she went to school for interior design. So she's self-taught graphic design and all of that. And I said, come do this with me. You're good at everything that I'm not really good at at this point, building the website and doing the branding and let's do it together. I think it could be really amazing. I have no idea, but like, let's just do it. And so she, you know, I convinced her somehow and she came alongside me to, to do it. Um, and it's been fantastic. Um, and we've, you know, built this business, um, so again, started with this course, but through my network marketing experience, residual income was something I learned through that concept, mm -hmm. right? You bring a customer in and if they continuously buy products every month, you have residual income and you don't have to find brand new customers and clients every single month. So I was like, people are going to buy this business course, but then we're going to have to just keep finding people to buy this business course. So I was like, what can we do to keep them and pay, paying a membership fee for that? Yeah. And so decided they would want educational classes they could use to then market to their audiences. And so we took this course idea and concept as our base structure to our membership, like join the membership, you get this business training course and then stick around every single month for new content. And so we really just launched it instead of just as a course, as a membership site with course and content included. And so that was like just mind blowing, you know, in terms of launching and having people sign up and you guys guess how much we launched this. I'm going to have you guess how much we launched our membership site for. Take a stab in the dark. The way you're saying it, it sounds like it's cheaper than what it should be. Am I right in saying that? Yes, yes. Okay. I'm going to say between about twenty to thirty dollars a month. Four dollars and ninety-five cents a Sorry, month. You say you say forty dollars and ninety-five cents. Four. Four dollars. Then oh, and four dollars. Okay. Four dollars. Okay. There yeah, we pitched it essentially as an expensive Starbucks coffee. Yeah. Like skip that so expensive this, Starbucks this coffee this month. Four dollars a day? You're saying you were? No, no, no. Four dollars a month. <laughs> okay. Or five, yeah, yeah. essentially five dollars a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the membership to get access to this course, and then it's at the time it was two new classes, essential oil classes that we would release. So a, no one was really doing what we were doing. Yeah. Uh, they weren't giving as much content and they certainly weren't giving it at the low price point, mm. but we, you have to know your audience. Yeah. We were speaking to network marketers, people yeah. that shared for a living. Right. And so we mm. were going for the power in lower price point, larger mm. volume and members, because we mm. knew they would talk about us. We knew they would refer us. That's just in their nature. Yeah. Right. So you can make the same amount of money if you have, uh, you know, a hundred people spending a thousand dollars or a thousand people spending a hundred dollars a month as, you know, whatever the math is, yeah, lower yeah. price we'll, point. We'll, we'll, we'll simple. Well, let's even simplify that. Let's just say for, actually, we'll ask the numbers. So how many people, was it an instant success? Did you get a whole heap of people in straight away? Yeah, we had, we made 8,000 our first month. We Ooh. had 1,400 people in our first month. There and we go. Okay. then let's, after, let's, let's after just a, oh, yeah, no, you okay. Go. No, you go. No, you go. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to say, if we do those numbers there, so let's say, for example, like um, Chrissy could have charged a thousand dollars for it. Right. And then she might've had one or two people buy it, you know? Okay. Not bad. You know, 2000 people. Um, but she knew her price point and she obviously got a network with that many people. She knows that she can get it in there. So it's important to know that that pricing side of things. If you've got a big network, you know, maybe you don't need to charge that, mm -hmm. that much. You know, maybe you can go in a bit lower and get a, a whole heap of people in. You know, it's and especially if it's something like a mem coaching is different. Obviously, coaching, you're giving up your time. Yeah. It needs to yeah. be you need to charge what you're worth. But if it's something that you're not even there, it's just a total number. It makes zero um it means absolutely zero what one unit costs what matters is how much are you making what's the total amount that you're making each month so yeah i'm sorry continue with that so five dollars yeah. a month 
No, hundred percent. You have to know, again, we knew who our ideal client was. We knew what they were looking for. We knew where they were in their journey. By the time this comes out, I think I have, I've got a podcast coming out. It's three things to consider when pricing your course or three things to oh. consider when pricing your membership. I'll have both of those episodes out let's, by this let's, time. Let's, let's pause there for a second. That's a good topic. If you're watching live on Facebook, what was the name of it, Chrissy? Say it again. That so there's up. two episodes. One is three things to consider when pricing your course. And the other episode is three things to consider when pricing your membership. Okay. And so I'll give you a little sneak peek of what we talk about in there, but where they are in their journey, yeah. right? If it's a brand new, brand new someone to, to business or the industry, whatever you're in, maybe they're a little bit, you know, scared to invest in themselves whether it's, you know, B to C, they're new into fitness and they're like, I don't know if I can keep up with this program. Yeah. You know, I have no idea or new to business. I don't, I'm doing this to like make money. I don't have a lot of extra funds. So thinking about where they are in their journey, our membership course and membership was for the brand new brand partner in this specific company. We knew that they were launching their business to make money and they didn't have a lot of extra you know? So yeah, of course, hundred percent, if you're doing more one-on-one -on -one coaching with someone, you know, time is money. And so there's value in that. So pricing it higher, but kind of just understanding where they're at, what you're offering um, and how you're offering it. And we were offering it in a very automated way. We created it and then we could release it to the masses. So it wasn't taking any more time you know, someone could argue with me more people to support, but it wasn't taking any more time to create that content for one person as it was, you know, 4,000 people by the end of four months. Yeah. And right? even, even with that, I feel if you're paying five bucks a month, you probably don't expect a whole heap of support, you know? It's right, a, right. Exactly. You know? Exactly. For sure. And sometimes that doesn't work. So again, you're yeah. going to have to look at your business and know who is my ideal client. Are they going to look at it and say, it's only $5. It must yeah. be crap. Yeah. Exactly. As opposed to sometimes I've definitely heard stories of people that say I launched it at $20 a month and no one took me serious. And so I increased it to a hundred dollars and they were like, Oh, I have to pay that much. It must be really good. And they jump in. So the psychology is just crazy. So you really have to kind of dive into your business, who your ideal client is on pricing alone. But the point is, is that I was just asking people for $5 a month mm. and was able to, you know, grow uh, exponentially very quickly. And then with the residual income every month and just continuously growing and growing, you know, that's really how we leveraged and built, you know, and, and scaled to a million dollars in under 20 months. That's uh, what I recommend anyone watching on Facebook. I, I strongly recommend checking out those podcasts Chrissy was talking about how to price your course and your membership. Just comment podcast down below. We'll get you over the link there. If you're listening later on the podcast, I'll put it in. I'll put the link to Chrissy's podcast in the show notes, and it'll it'll be out by then anyway. So you can you can go there. Um, all right, cool. So let's let's expand on that a bit. So launch straight away. Did you say eight thousand dollars on the first month? Yeah, I think it was something around there. We had about fifteen hundred people month one. Again, with membership residual income it starts compounding as long as you can mm -hmm. keep your members but that's what we want in in membership right um and so i think the second month was twenty thousand, and then very quickly you know we were at 60 30 000 and 60 000 um, just, months just organically just like people were hearing about it people were referring people just by that yeah, very organic. We didn't start running ads until a year or plus into our business. Um, so one of the other notes that I wrote down to like talk about one of the things that that helped us, you know, build this business and generate so much so quickly is, um, you know, knowing where your audience is. Yeah. So knowing where to find them. And if you you know, there isn't that place where they're hanging out, you create that space for them to hang yeah. out. So, you know, you've done an amazing job with this in the, you know, course creators community. You've created this space for course creators to hang out mm. and you have access. Like it's no secret. You can leverage this group, you know, for your business, which is amazing. And so that's what I did unintentionally Again, I was trying to solve my own problems. I've, I've definitely learned when you do your business and focus on service first, 
sometimes you create the most magical things on accident. Mm. And so I was not only trying to serve myself and my business, but opened it up to others. So I started a group called Essential Oils for Professionals. Remember this, these people are in essential oils and was like, I really wish that when I signed up a massage therapist, I had like another massage therapist they could talk to, to mm -hmm. learn about how to do this business. Sure. I can, t I know enough about oils and enough about massage therapy that I could tell them, but I'm not a massage therapist. And we like to listen to our like mind, right? Like when I see another nurse, even though I'm not doing it yeah. and they say they're a nurse, I'm like, yes, nurses, like we rock, right? Report, teachers with yeah. teachers, chiropractors with chiropractors, course creators with course yeah. creators. Yeah. And so I was like, let me gather a bunch of people who are in these special industries to talk about their industry and, and building this business. Cause that's how you really build your network marketing business, um, for this community. And so, so that's what we did. And it was an event style. So, you know, this is where collaboration comes into play. Another huge mm -hmm. uh, factor into building my business yeah. this fast is collaboration. So, you know, we did it in a Facebook group, but did it as a summit style event, if you will. I didn't even like think of it as a summit. Then I was just like, yeah, for one week, you're going to go live at this time. And then you're going to go live and then you're going to go live. Um, and they taught about how to use oils personally and then professionally and build their business. And because of all of those people in there, and I just opened it up for free, I wanted the resource for me and my team. And I said, yeah, invite your teams in as well. The group grew to 40,000 in a matter Ooh. of a month. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it was, it wasn't intentional. I definitely have, have thought of other moments in my journey. I was doing a wellness program at some point and I was working so hard to, you know, tap into other people's networks and do that and getting crickets. And it was just like, you know what, I just want to create this thing for me and I'm going to let other people use it for free. And it just sort of magically came together. So again, leading with service um, you know, and, and, and letting it unfold as it will was a blessing for us and collaborating was a huge, a huge part in that. And so I was able to leverage that Facebook group when we launched Grow Workspace, which wasn't even in existence when that group came to, to life. Um, you know, other big tip there, if you have a Facebook group, hundred percent, grab an email address when people get into your group. Are you doing that? I assume oh, that yes. you are. Yes. Yeah, yes, right. Yes, you have to yes, now. Yes. I don't think What's we have those. Like, yeah, you didn't, yeah, you didn't, you weren't, you didn't have questions when I saw Back them, then. Was, yeah, yeah, no, back then, no questions, no questions. Yeah. So I had this group of 40,000 and I ended up finding someone in my yoga community who taught marketing. And I was like, listen, I really know nothing about business, but have this idea. I have this group, but I don't know how to leverage them because it's a mix of oil users and business people and grow workspaces for business people, not the oil users. He said, well, you need to create a free offering and collect their email address. Yeah. And I was like, okay, okay, like this is a new concept, collecting an email address. But now, so now I'm always teaching you know, people are hanging out in social media, but you don't own your social media. Yeah. In a second, I know people whose yeah. accounts have been shut off or no access to groups or yeah. whatever. So protect that by grabbing an email address. And now you can ask those questions. Hey, you can come into this space where we give amazing free content, but it's going to cost you your email address. And a lot of people are willing to give it, right? I'm sure you have a lot of people that are like, okay, here's my email. Well, I'll, I'll tell you Let a couple of things on that. Let me think my, my so about 30%. And I think that that also comes down to how well you know your audience as well. So if you're watching this, 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 and you're in a Facebook group, or you've got a Facebook group, and you're like, yeah, I've got a question. I ask people for their email addresses, but no one actually puts it in. It can offer me because of that lead magnet. And if you have that perfect, if you've got, and this is one thing I think listening to your story, Chris, you had dialed down to the T, is you just knew your avatar perfectly. You knew exactly who they were, exactly what they wanted, exactly what they needed, exactly what price point they would have. And then once you know that, it's very easy to create the perfect lead magnet that the person will, will opt in straight away. So I think that's a huge mm -hmm. tip. I want to um, just summarize a couple of the really good things you've done there, Chrissy, that I think are principles that anyone could, could take away and 
I mean, I don't know if they could do them as well as you could. It might take them some time to tone those skills, but at least things to, to start working on. I think the, the biggest thing that you probably did really well from the start was your networking, Chrissy. You know, it's, and networking is one of those things, uh, the reward doesn't pay off instantly. You know, you might go and meet someone now and it's going to do absolutely nothing for your business, but in two years' time, when you need that connection there, this person that you met two years ago and you had that relationship with can now help you out because you've done the hard work for, for two yeah. years. I think that's a big part. Would you agree with that? Yeah, 100%. And I want to preface by saying we were the five-year overnight success, Yeah. right? Like, yeah. so for, well, I don't think it was five years, but for a solid three years, I was building my network inside this essential oils community, Yeah. just serving and building my own business and talking to people and giving tips and advice just because the nature in me of a coach, right? Wanting to yeah. help and serve. And so while it may seem like, you know, we generate, we, you know, had 1500 paying members in one month, yeah. you know, there was years where I was building those networks. So years you're not even thinking about even right now yeah. with maybe that next offering you're going to offer in a year, yeah. you're building relationships right now that are going to be beneficial for that very special program that you're going to offer later. You might not even know it yet. So yeah, yeah keep networking, keep talking to people, keep collaborating. There's a, there's a couple points with that as well, because I think like there's also the trust side of things, right? Let's just say, for example, let's, you, let's use this podcast. Let's say as a result of this, someone's like, oh, yeah, Chris is pretty cool. I'm going to add her as a friend or go and follow her on social media or whatever. They, they might not buy your thing right now, right? Um, but in a year or two, you might launch something else. And this, oh, Chrissy, I've been following her for, for a year or two now. Now I'm finally ready to buy. Mm -hmm. So I think like there's your, there's your network of like, your professional network that you can collaborate with but then there's also people that maybe you know start to follow you now or like half like what you're doing but aren't ready to buy now if you're in the game for long enough like they're going to buy eventually because they've been following you long enough to, to actually like what you do and see yeah. you grow because hopefully you're growing um, but there's just a trust there it's not someone they met yesterday and he's going to run off with their money so man i've been following this person for for years now so i think that those things are, are really um key there and then i think the collaboration but i think that that ties in as well with everything there where it's like you can network with professionals you can grow your list you can collaborate like the possibilities are endless if you're in there long enough and there's one more point that i want to try and hit home here let me think if i can explain this properly so um yeah i guess no i guess that's just no i guess like your network keeps giving if that makes sense, if you can build an audience now and you can monetize that audience now, that's great. But if you're in it for the long term, that person that's paying you five dollars a month now or whatever it is, you know, even if it's, if it's mm -hmm. more, if they bought a five hundred dollar course today or whatever, in a couple in a year's time, they might buy another five hundred dollar course, then another five hundred dollar course, then another one, and then it just yeah. keeps going exponentially because you, you keep building your audience, you keep selling to the new people. You keep selling to the old people and then it just it just gets to a point. It's hard work at the start, but it gets to a point where it just takes off, which I think is amazing. Uh, and then the other two things I think you've done really well is obviously know your audience inside out. I think mm -hmm. that's key for everyone listening to this. Don't, well, let me turn that over. I think it's a, a, a better advantage, especially at the start, fall in love with your ideal customer as opposed to the product or the course. I think yeah. a lot of people at the start are like, yeah, I've got this perfect course and it might be perfect for you, right? But is it what the market wants? Is it what they need? Do you know? It, it might even be the perfect course for them, but if you can't sort of communicate it or express it in the way that they want, you know, it might not be. So I think it's key just to, the, the better you can know your audience. Um, and that's another thing that I like about Facebook groups as well. I use my group also as a tester. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to make a post here that I think will be an engaging post and get people riled up or get people talking. And if it does, I'm like, great. I know the hot points. You know, I know what might, that's why you might, you, if you scroll through this group, you might see a lot of engagement posts. Like, well, why is this guy posting, you know, Dropbox or Google Drive, you know? But the reason I, I do it is, okay, cool. Let me see, does this roll people up or do people not even care less, you know? And I think yeah. that's a good temperature check. 
You know, if you've got a yeah. Facebook post or an audience, it's not about the likes and the comments, but it's about knowing that audience. It's like, okay, do I know what fires these people up? Uh, and then the other thing that you've obviously done really well is just being really good at what you do. And it's like, all right, cool. Let me put the work in and let me get really, really good at what I do. And I think if you put all of those things together, I think anyone watching this is going to be successful. If it's like, right, let me be really good at what I do. Let me know my audience inside out and let me grow my network, collaborate and keep at it. They're going to have a good chance of being successful. Would you yeah. agree with that, Chrissy? Yeah, definitely playing to your strengths. I mean, that's yeah. something like I play to my strengths. I know what my strengths are. I've been doing yeah. a lot of personal development, you know, through this entire journey, learning more and listening to that and knowing what I'm not good at. Remember I said, I brought my sister in to help build the website and, you know, set up all the automations, you know, another thing that was super efficient, helped us be efficient. Um, but I knew what I wasn't great at and I brought someone in to help. So, you know, I gave her a percentage of the business to do that. Now, if you can scrounge up the funds to hire someone, <laughs> it's in your better interest to just pay someone a one-time thing to set that up for you and not be like, here's a chunk of my business for yeah, eternity, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to do this. But we work together as partners ongoing. So, you know, and we love it and we, we work so well together. So it works out well. Um, but yeah, just, just knowing what you're good at, playing to those, identifying what you're not good at yeah. and doing, you know, two things. One, trying to get a little bit better at them to mm. understand them a little bit more, but then secondly, hiring out. Yeah. And so that's the fifth thing, you know, that what that we did was hiring out the help that we were mm. not good at so that we could focus in our zone of genius, continuing to create and continue to serve, which is what I was really good at. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, let me piggyback off, off those and then we'll do a final question and a, and a wrap up. Um, yeah, I think like, there's a couple things there. So, okay, I think one, one key thing that I take away there is even just a virtual assistant, having a virtual assistant. Because I think a lot of the time as course creators, especially if you're starting off, you do want to save as much money as possible. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I've got to pay this software and that software. Let me save as much money as, as I can as possible. And there's an advantage to that, of course. The, the reason why I recommend everyone spend a bit of cash on a virtual assistant is because it's pretty affordable, like $5 an hour, you know, you can get a, a, a decent VA, you know, um, they might have to do a couple hours a week, maybe 50 bucks a week, you know, and you can get a decent VA. The reason why I think that's the best expense is because you're buying your time back, mm -hmm. right? And let's say, for example, there's so much fiddly things that, that you do, you know, as a, as a course creator, that sort of impede your zone of genius. You know, if you're really good at the, the teaching side of things, but then you've got to get bogged down by the admin. That's going to affect your teaching as well, you know? Or maybe you're good at sales and marketing, but if you've got to do the admin, you know, it's going to bog you down there as well. But if you can just um, pay that virtual assistant to do some of that stuff that you're not good at, it frees you up to, be, um, to have more time there. And then the other thing I take out of that is there's so many options these days. And I'm learning this more and more um, with my journey. I've realized that the things that I really like doing uh, Facebook groups and Facebook lives, right? I hate YouTube. As much as I want to be, get a big YouTube following, I hate it. I can't be bothered. You can probably see by this video, you know, my hair's not done. There's a light up there. I've got a fake background, you know, like I hate video editing, you know? So it's just got to get to the point where it's like, Jono, you're never going to be a YouTuber. You know, you're good at Facebook groups. You're confident on Facebook lives. Just stick to that and don't waste your time on YouTube or, or wait until you've got a whole heap of time to learn YouTube, you know, and then then go and do it there. So I think that's um, an awesome point. Uh, Chrissy, there's a few points, there's a question or two questions I always like to finish up with. One of them is, is obviously a group for course creators. Uh, I'm curious to who you use to create your courses with. Is it Kajabi? Is it Teachable? Is it Facebook groups, Google Drive, eBooks? What's, what's your platform of choice? Yeah, Kajabi is my platform of choice. So we've used that from the beginning when, you know, Claire was the one researching which platform should we use for our website and our email system. And she was like, look, I attended this webinar. They seem like it's something you could do. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, then it must be pretty straightforward. And if I can learn it, you guys, I am not the techiest of techie. My brain does not function how I think more techie people, how, how their brain functions. I'm not super intuitive. I'll give you an example for the life of, for, for like forever, I would be on a website and be like, how do I freaking get back to the homepage? And so I would text Claire, like, these are the kinds of questions I would text her in the beginning. Okay. How the heck do I get back to the homepage? And she goes, do you see the logo in the the upper left corner? Click on that. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, well, that's not intuitive. Like that's just the logo. Like, so I know where I am, you know? And so there's little things like that, that it's just, it wasn't intuition to me to like, oh, let me just poke around on there. So I've gotten better at just clicking random things to see (laughs) what it will do. Um, But she was like, listen, I think you can learn how to use this. And I did very quickly learn how to, you know, create the landing pages and set up emails and, you know, add our products to the, the product suite and all of that. So if I can learn it, you guys, you can learn Kajabi. And to be honest, I really know nothing about any of the other platforms because it's been what I've used from the beginning and we do everything through there. I'll, I'll give my take on that. So I think Kajabi is definitely the best. So I've tried all of them and I've spoken to everyone that's used all of them. Hands down, Kajabi is the best uh, for, for two major reasons. Number one, it's, it's got the all in one side of things. If you use like a Teachable or I think if it great platforms to, to host your courses on, but they let you down a little bit on the, the marketing funnel side of things. Kajabi is really good on the, the marketing funnels. I personally use, well, I've got, I've got two businesses. On one of them, I use Teachable and ClickFunnels just because I'm stuck in there. You know, it's like I've got mm-hmm. thousands of funnels, thousands of courses. I, it's not the most efficient way. It's not the best way, but I just can't get out of it. You know, uh, yeah. the thing with Kajabi is if you go with the best at the start, you're sort of, you know, you, you never have to change again and never end up in that issue there. With the course creator community, because I've just started, I've gone with New Zendler, not because it's better than Kajabi, simply because it's cheaper than Kajabi. And that's what I think, uh, if, if you're listening to this, I think if you've got... Um, if you've already got a good stream of revenue, go for Kajabi because it's hands down the best. You know, um, the only limitation is is it is, is also the most expensive, right? So yeah, I think yeah. if you listen to this, then you've you've got your income's good. You know, you know you're gonna um, you've got income coming in. You can afford the two, three, four hundred bucks, whatever package you go for. Kajabi is your best option there. If you're living tight, okay, you know it may not be the best use of, of your four hundred bucks there. That's that's mm-hmm. one thing. The yeah, yeah, actually to that. So we use Kajabi for both for both businesses, Grow Workspace and now my personal brand. So I was like, I know it. Why am I going to change? Um, we've had a ton of additional coding. Now this was three years into the business, already made multi-millions just using Kajabi, but have added a ton of coding, mostly because we have 250 products in that business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so the organizational piece to be able to categorize different products, you know, right now with Kajabi, it's not there. And that's what we needed. So we've had additional coding. Um, there's another one. You've probably never heard of it. It's called Attract Well. And the reason I know of it is because they have a sister company called Get Oiling, which is marketed towards oh, the essential yeah. oil users. And we recommend that for our oils uh, people, a, it's way cheaper. Um, you can actually do pretty much everything that Kajabi can on it. And even more, they have texting and some other cool automations. Um, but the other cool thing is that we create templates for that community and we can get, we can create an entire funnel. So imagine Mm -hmm. your lead magnet to the thank you page, to the automated email, to the free gift download. We can set up that entire funnel inside get oiling or attract well, it's basically the same and then give our community the link to it. And then they click on it and poof, it just uploads into their site and it's theirs to then edit. So for that community, we create texting campaigns or email campaigns for them to use to educate their essential oil community. So we, you know, a click of a button, poof, it uploads. We can't do that per se with Kajabi. So, you know, for those few things, we do recommend that site. So, so I do think it's valuable. And again, Claire did the research for us in the (laughs) beginning on all the different platforms. So I'm sure you've got videos out there for people to watch on the various 
to, to see what's going to work best. And based on what you're offering, you know, how many courses do you have? Is it, you know, do you need that community aspect? Cause maybe you don't want to do it on Facebook, you know? And so there's lots of new things coming out, um, that I know, like, I can't keep up with them all really. <laughs> there's so many new options. Uh, awesome. Well, final question, Claire, uh, Chrissy is around mentors. So you're obviously a mentor for plenty of people out there in network marketing, plenty of people out there in health, plenty of people that want to get courses, membership sites together. I'm curious who your biggest mentors have been. And if you could answer this in a few different ways, if you could give us a paid mentor, so someone that you've paid money to, to learn from, whether it's their code, whether it's their course or their coaching program, uh, someone that you haven't paid money to, but you consider them a mentor, maybe you follow them on YouTube, Instagram, social media, whatever it is, uh, and then a book that you recommend everyone should read if they want to be successful in the online course space. Okay, I love this. All right, so paid, I've paid a lot of coaches. I feel that. Um, but John Russo was my high performance coach and he is amazing. Um, you know, so, so him for sure, high performance. Basically I was at that point where I was like, listen, I am doing so much. I'm burning out. And the whole reason I started this business was so, you know, one of my other mottos is work less, enjoy and earn more. And so just working with someone on that big picture, business, life, relationships, health as a high performer, um, was really, really great for me. So I have a, me, a ton of amazing coaches, but love John Russo um, for his high performance coaching. Someone who I look up to, who I haven't paid, well, you, you're, I oh, haven't bought anything you from too, you yet. Only because, I, only because I gave you those compliments <laughs> at the start. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reality is that at some point, like if I, I'm one of those people that if I follow you long enough, I'm probably buying from you. So yeah. all of the people that I really look up to, um, I've purchased something from them, whether it's a course or I'm in their membership program. Um, I'm always wanting to learn more inside their communities, their courses, network with the people that are also in there. So I've paid a lot of people. Um, so I'm sure I'll be on your list, you know, soon for now. I can't yeah. recommend you as a non, a non paid. <laughs> and then for a book, um, I'm not a big reader. So I find audio books because I can plug in a lot easier. Um, but I was just recently kind of having an issue with my own imposter syndrome and like, not wanting to be that copier, like, oh, I love what they're doing, but now I just feel like I'm, you know, copying them or I don't want to copy them. So I almost was at the point where I was like, I can't follow my mentors anymore mm -hmm. because I'm too afraid that I'm going to copy. Mm -hmm. And someone recommended to me a book called Steal Like an Artist. And Thank I cannot you. remember the author's name, but oh, if you look up Steal Like an Artist, I think his name is Austin something. Um, it's an hour long book if you're listening. So, so digestible. It's probably just a mini book, but it really teaches you. It, it basically, the whole point and concept is that no one has original content mm -hmm. and it all stems from somewhere. So stealing like an artist is getting that inspiration and influence from the greats before you and turning it into your process and the way that you interpreted it and, um, and then can refeed it to your community with your own twist, um, you know, your own vibe to it. So that for me, so if you're struggling with feeling like a copycat or an imposter or, you know, whatever it is, grab that book, listen to it for an hour. Um, and it will, it will set you on the straight and narrow for sure. I've got it here. Austin Cleon. There you go. I've just added it to my uh, shopping list on Amazon. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, Chrissy, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for today. Is there anything I should have asked you but forgot to or anything you want to finish us off with? No, I don't think so. That was perfect. I had written down kind of the five things that really helped me get to the level that I have gotten to and we covered them, you know, some way about another. So I'll just recap. One, knowing your ideal client, what they want, um, and then being able to offer that to them, whether it's a free thing to grow your audience or a paid thing to generate revenue. Number two, we talked about knowing where your ideal client hangs out. And if you can go that next level and create that space for them, then you have full leverage. 
Um, number three is collaboration to get your, your brand out there. So networking collaboration. Number four, we didn't dive too much into this. I just briefly mentioned it, leveraging automations. Great mm -hmm. way to free up your time. And number five was hiring a team. Um, mm -hmm. And I wrote down here to free up your time. And I remember you said that, getting your time back. So, you know, those are the five things that I really give a lot of credit. There's so many other things, but give a lot of credit to um, getting where I have gotten and seeing other people that have been successful and noticing that those they're doing the same things. Love it. Awesome. All right. So everyone watching on the Facebook group. Oh, you know what? If you want the written description of those five things, just comment written description and then I'll, I'll type them out and, and send them over to you. Um, if you want to check out Chrissy's podcast, which I recommend you do, just comment podcast down below. And if you want to check out Chrissy's lead magnet, which is about how to turn your knowledge into profit, just type lead magnet down below. Um, that's it for me. If you're watching on Facebook, just hit the like button. Oh, and most important thing, just comment below and say thank you to Chrissy. She's given up probably an hour of her time now just to, to help us out. So make sure we comment below and say thank you, Chrissy. Uh, Chrissy, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Like you, this doesn't feel like work. It's just so much fun.